So if we want to talk about what's going on with the world of commerce, not just e-commerce, the world of commerce, and we're looking at Amazon, the first thing that you have to look at is, is, is what's happened. Um, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, this quarter was Amazon's first quarter ever, and they finished their first quarter with $16 million of sales. If you look 10 years from then, they went to $3 billion. Um, I don't have my calculator, but look at the multiplier there. That's not bad from 16 million to 3 billion. And you look at the quarter just reported, 35.7 billion. Um, the percentage increase isn't as large, but my, 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 holy cow. If we look at prime membership, which is obviously the, uh, it's not a, a shipping program, it's a loyalty program, the world's greatest loyalty program, the most successful loyalty program. Uh, Amazon, of course, won't tell us the numbers that are in it, but my estimate is about 72 million Americans are in Amazon Prime, and so it's up. FBA, which is the largest or the second largest uh, 3PL in the United States, um, people don't think of it as that way, and in fact, Amazon doesn't report it that way. It reports FBA as a segment of retail, but um, we have a different way of looking at Amazon's balance sheet and reporting, and we have come up with a division they don't have called ATL, which is Amazon Trucking and Logistics, and um, that is the largest division. It's about double the size of AWS, which they claim is their largest division, because they don't have an interest in letting you know that they are really in the supply chain and logistics business, not the retail business. And so you, we got to watch where that lines up. If we look at their commitment today, they have 240 facilities with 93 million square feet. And this year they're building 35 new facilities, an additional 27 million square feet. If all of us in the room got put on a team and told we have to bring up 35 facilities this year of 27 million square feet, you and I and all of our friends, I don't think we could do it. Um, that, that's a lot of facilities, so that's really exciting to see what they've been doing. Um, as the world has been trying to get to two day, the prime promise is now one day. I told my wife that, who's a huge Amazon shopper. If there's not, I, I, so I'm a supply chain guy, so obviously my role in the family is I'm the box boy. When I get home after a week's travel, there's a bunch of boxes on top of the refrigerator in the garage. And my job is to break down the boxes, okay? With eight grandkids that live within 10 miles of my wife's and my house, um, she does a lot on Amazon. And so when I told her the Amazon promise was gone to one day, she said, no, it's always been one day. We live in Raleigh, North Carolina. That's not New York City. That's not Chicago. That's not LA. She said, it's always been one day. She said, I get everything in one day. She said, that has been the promise. And I said, well, to you, apparently, but that's not what it says in the paperwork. Prime Now is, is way up. Private label is way up. Um, you look at what they're doing in apparel, it's flat amazing. They brought out on December 22nd last year, the button down shirt. A shirt as nice as anyone in this room has on for $40 delivered to your door. Uh, only, of course, in yellow, blue, and white, because those are the colors that sell the most, and they'll let all the other colors uh, go out to the uh, retailers that sell apparel. We see their latest uh, item, I Lily and Iris. Lily and Iris, uh, we knew was coming because it had been in the UK for six months. Uh, Lily and Iris is basically a Victoria's Secret intimate wear at a fourth of the price. Um, they don't have my size, so I haven't quite figured out um, how to test it, but I have one and do wear now button-down shirts. Um, the stores, Amazon is um, really playing with in a big way. You've seen Amazon Go, you've seen the, the, the click and collect, you've seen the bookstores, um, you've seen all the rumors of Amazon buying this company, buying this company, um, big deal. AWS, a very profitable division, um, Amazon Web Service, they do report that one. They claim that's larger than what I claim is the largest, which is ATL. Um, they also, B2B, up last year 30%. And people say, well, they don't do B2B. 
Um, been talking to furniture people for quite some time. They say, well, Amazon will never do furniture. Well, it's called Amazon Unboxed, and it is alive and well and taking market share. So that's kind of the data, the background. And what I want to do in a couple minutes I have is share with you a few considerations. First of all, something called Monarch FX, which is a post-collect collaborative logistics play. Post-click means after you've bought it. Okay, so it's not pre-click. I believe most retailers and most brands should spend their money on pre-click. That's where they establish who they are. They look at the customer promises and what they're trying to deliver to the customer. But then post-click is a commodity. Post-click is a commodity, and most retailers and brands should not be in it because you can't touch Amazon. Amazon's cost structure is beyond anything that anyone can touch. Their, so, their cost of fulfillment, their cost of delivery is very, very low. Um, their inventory and uh, IT is awesome. And so we're not going to beat Amazon. And so the only way to get close is to have a collaborative, or some people call it a collaboratory. That's where you collaborate in a laboratory. And you develop synergism that allows you to get local, with high automation, great technology, quick and inexpensive delivery. And that's called Monarch FX. And so that needs to be looked at. There's the other thing that we need to look at that's called new retail. And the question I would ask you to start that discussion is, what if the Amazon, Alibaba, Walmart jet business model is right for certain product categories, but not right for others? Whoa. People haven't done that. Go to one of the Amazon conveyable fulfillment centers, and they've got all categories in that. When I went to industrial engineering school, they taught me the material handling design equation was what plus where equals method. What is the category? We should not be handling apparel in the same way that we're handling uh, Cheerios and Oreos. Those are different categories. Amazon's Achilles heel is they don't get categories. That's the opportunity. That's the opening. The thing that makes that interesting, though, is we see a lot of categories that are bad for the Amazon, Walmart, Jet, Alibaba model that are being done with the Amazon, Walmart, Jet, and Alibaba model. For example, grocery. Grocery. That leads to the second question. What if the Amazon, Alibaba, and Walmart jet business models for e-commerce are superior to brick and mortar because brick and mortar is wrong? Holy cow, we haven't thought of that. I was standing down the Palmer House a couple weeks ago. I got up at 4 in the morning, tried to order room service. She says there's nothing, no, room service doesn't open until 6. I said, I'm hungry now. She said, I can't help you. I said, where do I get something to eat? She said, there's a CVS across the street that has stuff. I thought, great, I'll go to CVS and see what they got. As I'm walking out of the, the Palmer House at four in the morning, I think to myself, something healthy, something good for me. Chocolate chip cookies, okay? <laughs> so I go in, I say, hey, cookies. And the guy says, second aisle in the back. I said, second I got. This is, this is CVS, this is a drugstore. This isn't a grocery store. They had 18 varieties of chocolate chip cookies with nuts, Without nuts. Crispy, uh, crunchy, smooth, big packs, little, 18 skews. Every skew was overflowing. I couldn't get the pack of cookies I wanted out without adjusting the shelf. What the heck are we doing? Why do they have so many cookies? That doesn't make sense. They probably had four months worth of stock on hand. Why did we do that? because of the old material handling unit load principle. The only old unit load principle says you bring cases in and you replenish cases. That's wrong. Because we have a case supply chain, we think we need to replenish cases. But guess what? Today we have an each supply chain. It's called direct to consumer. We're not shipping the consumer a case of chocolate chip cookies. We're sending them each. If we have an automated each fulfillment center, for direct to consumer, why can't we use that also to replenish the store? And so what I would suggest to you is the merchants have screwed up retail. 
because they want to look at the display. And they want you to push your cart a mile and a half through the supercenter. It's wrong. It's not economical. That's why some of this food is so unhealthy is because you've got to put so much preservatives because it sits in the store for four months. And so what we need to do is we need to figure which categories are good and which categories are bad, and then we've got to figure out how we're going to make that work. There's also a difference between what you do in a New York City versus what you do in Raleigh, North Carolina, because in New York City, people don't own a car. In Raleigh, everyone owns a car. And so there's some differences there. And we've got to really understand what works well. So if we look at what is known, Jeff Bezos has said consistently for 15 years, we would love to open Amazon retail stores, but we want to do something that is uniquely Amazon. But we haven't found that yet. Well, he now has. His Amazon Books is working. His Amazon Grocery is going to be a disaster. Aldi and, and, and Lytle are coming to the U.S. and significantly cutting the cost of grocery. And people are going to say, gee whiz, I guess I'll go to the store, as long as they have an each supply chain driving it. Jeff uh, has said, we now need to be looking at retail innovations. And he's heading off in different directions, not telling us which one he really thinks is the winner. But if you analyze the economics, it's real clear which ones are the winners and which ones are the losers. Um, Jack Ma said in his October letter to the shareholders, pure e-commerce will be reduced to a traditional business and replaced by the concept of new retail. Wow. Wow. And we're all to design, trying to design a supply chain that's trying to meet an obsolete concept of retail. New retail is not driven by merchandising. New retail is driven by us. We might now decide if we let them in the boardroom, after them keeping us out of the boardroom for 25 years. New retail is a new deal. New retail is based upon a demand-based replenishment environment within each supply chain. And so if we look at the Amazification of commerce, I would suggest to you that it's really, really, really exciting times. Thank you.